this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at anonymous classes in Java. So um, anonymous classes are basically a way of either extending um, an existing class or uh, implementing an interface in such a way that you can just do it kind of one time as a one-shot thing, um, which, is, uh, which is often quite useful. So uh, let's take a look at a couple of examples here. And I'm, I'm going to create a class here to act as a parent class and I'll call it machine and uh, let's give that a method public void start and I'll just put this out in there and let's say starting machine so just a really simple class with one method now to create a new object from that class of course I say machine uh, machine one let's say um, and this bit is just a variable declaration so it's not actually creating a object and I, I point this reference variable here at an object, a new object, by saying equals new machine. And so here we've got um, an actual object, an actual instance uh, of this class, a sort of um, an actual thing that's been created from this blueprint, which uh, among other things contains this method. So um, I can now run start by saying machine1.start and of course if I run that we'll see um, After Eclipse has, uh, has had a bit of a think down in the console hopefully we'll see starting machine and uh, here we go now uh, the way an anonymous class works is um, let's say I want to um, override this start method in machine uh, of course the normal way to do it is you create a class uh, let's say camera and you say that it extends machine and you implement the start method in there overriding the one in a parent class but I can also open a curly parenthesis here and put the closing one down there and this looks a bit surprising if you haven't seen it before and in this space here I can actually uh, override methods so um, I can say uh, for example, public, let's have an override annotation just to double check that I am overriding the right method. I can say here override public void start. Um, or I could use a short shortcut in Eclipse here and just right click and go to um, source override implement methods. That would also work. And then here I can supply a new implementation. So I can say uh, Let's say camera snapping. So now if I run this, it's um, it's running the start method in machine, but I've I've overridden that here. And uh, if you look at this object, the one that's um, that I'm creating by doing new here, you could ask like, well, what is the class of that object? It's not machine. Um, okay, the the class of the variable, the type of this variable is machine. But this thing is actually a child class of machine. It's not machine itself because it doesn't have uh, the machine implementation of this start method. It has an overridden implementation as though you've done extends on the class. So actually the, uh, the type of this object is some child class of machine that doesn't actually have a name. Um, and that's why it's called an anonymous class. And with anonymous classes, there's no... Um, there's no way that you can create a new object from this class um, here, uh, but it's it's good as a one-shot thing if you just want one example of some class that's a little bit different to an existing class. You can use an anonymous class syntax like this. Let's just take a look at one more example here. Let's supposing I have uh, an interface. Let's say um, interface. Uh, what should we have? Interface plant, let's say. And let's say that the plant interface, I could give it lots of methods, but I'll just give it one as an example. Um, so I'll give it a public void grow. And uh, yeah, because it's an interface, of course. We don't have any code, so there's no curly parentheses. We just have a semicolon there. Now to uh, to implement this interface, 
I could create a class and say that it, it implements plant and then I'd be forced to add a method to that class with this, um, with this header. But another way of doing this is to use, again, an anonymous class syntax. So I could say here plant plant1 equals new plant. Now this isn't going to work in itself. It's going to give me an error saying cannot instantiate the type plant. Instantiate means create an object from the class or the interface. And you can't instantiate um, interfaces because there's no code there to actually put into an object. Um, so this syntax for an interface is not legal in itself. It's just as if um, I'm kind of pretending here that plant is a is a class, but it isn't. And so this won't actually work. But again, what I can do is open a curly parenthesis and put a closing one in there, followed by a semicolon at the end. And now in here, actually the quickest way to do this is to click on this error and add unimplemented methods here. And now I can implement the grow method of plant uh, right here with this anonymous class syntax. Um, I don't need this override annotation. In fact, here it seems strange that we say override to implement the method in an interface. It is a sort of override, I suppose. Um, but anyway, leaving that aside, let's get rid of at least the blank lines. And this override annotation is, is not necessary. I could delete it. Um, and let's put in here, sysout plant growing. And now I can declare a variable of this type, the type of the interface. Well, actually, I already have done here. Um, and then I can say plant1.grow like that. So I can call the method of this anonymous class, which actually implements this interface. I need to say grow there. And once again, if I just run that now, save it and run it, then it's going to say plant growing. Uh, so that's it for this tutorial. And in the future, we're going to look at uh, some more examples of this, because often what you do is you declare an anonymous class while you actually pass it to a method at the same time. And that's often used for the kind of um, the kind of listener event pattern, which is I notice is, is tremendously confusing and difficult for beginners in Java, just because there are several different concepts all in one kind of uh, just in a few lines. And this is one of the concepts that you'll need to understand um, how um, event kind of listeners in GUI programming are often implemented. And even if you're not doing any GUI, uh, that's graphical user interface programming, you can you can do all sorts of things with this technique, which I'll go on to show you in future tutorials. Um, thanks again for all the fantastic comments that people have left on YouTube and on caverprogramming.com. It really makes it worthwhile creating these videos, so uh, many thanks. And uh, this code is going to be on caverprogramming.com. And I hope you'll join me again next time. Until then, happy coding.